Penn State's academic programs are divided among more than a dozen colleges. For example, the College of Agricultural Sciences and the College of Engineering. Meteorology and Atmospheric Science is housed in the College of Earth and Mineral Sciences, which we affectionately know as EMS. And we're pleased to welcome tonight to Weatherworld the Dean of the College of Earth and Mineral Sciences, Dr. Lee Kump. Thanks for joining us, Lee. Well, thanks for having me. Now, Lee, you've been on the faculty of the Department of Geosciences since 1986, most recently serving as its department chair. What's the transition been like going from overseeing one department to leading the entire college? Yeah, well, it's been great. It's been a real learning experience. You know, you'd think after 32 years, <laughs> I'd, have, I'd have sampled a little bit of everything that EMS has to offer, but I realized that, you know, despite my inter interdisciplinary tendencies, I really didn't get out much. And so um, learning about material sciences, learning about the engineering disciplines, these are things that I really I uh, had limited exposure to. I had quite a bit more exposure to, to meteorology and atmospheric sciences. So really that's been the, um, the biggest change. It's just, it's been an eye-opening experience. You are still relatively new as the dean. I mean, on the job less than a year. What's been, say, the most pleasant surprise that you've run into? You know, it's, I think the greatest surprise for me is the level of collegiality that exists across campus. I had this impression that deans were there <laughs> duking it out with the provost uh, and other deans for limited amounts of funding. And I'm finding just the opposite, that it's a great collaborative group of people. They are finding that the best way to accomplish the mission of the university is to work together. And so I've, I really enjoy that level of, of um, interaction. I'm seeing buildings that I've never seen before 32 years, you'd think I'd have been in every building on campus, right. but I've been in Dyke Building, <laughs> occasionally to Walker, and, and uh, now, you know, now the sky's the limit. Now, our college deals with some issues that are still pretty contentious, things like energy security, climate change. I mean, what do you hear from folks, especially alumni, when you're out talking about the college? Yeah, it's, it's always sort of a hot ticket issue, and, and you know, depending on where they fall across the spectrum, the, the discussions can be challenging. I found, though, that there's some common ground here, that you can develop consensus if, with respect to climate change, for example, we think about the risks that are associated with climate change rather than focusing just on attribution. And uh, so if you think about a business person um, who might be a little skeptical about the science behind climate change or the motivation of scientists. If you change that dialogue to, you know, uh, f the fact that in their day-to-day -day operations, they make decisions with uncertainty. And if they consider climate change another one of those uncertain factors that could have deleterious consequences for themselves, for their families, um, and for their business, then I think the, the dialogue can proceed. We still put the science of climate change into those projections of, of risk, but we, um, but we cast it in terms of uncertainty, and I think that works better. For energy, I think as well that if we think about the energy future for the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania, for the nation, for the world, and we think about a path that takes us to where we ultimately will be, which is with renewable energy, I think everyone agrees with that, um, when we achieve a fully renewable energy economy is something we argue about. But the path we take there, if we can ensure that we maximize prosperity while minimizing environmental damage, then I think we can develop consensus. The college routinely uh, funds innovative research projects. What are some of the most exciting research projects that are going on across the college right now? Yeah, we well, you know when you think about, for example, material sciences and faculty there who are developing advanced materials that can encase cancer drugs, transport them through the body to the tumor without impacting any other tissues or, or bone in the body. These are specific um, targets and, uh, and, and these materials um, will, will keep the drug enclosed until they find that target. That to me is, is earth mineral sciences advancing human health. We have a group of faculty who are, uh, are working uh, between geosciences, geography, and meteorology and atmospheric sciences, and they're applying deep machine learning and artificial intelligence to, to new approaches to predicting cold air outbreaks in the meteorology realm or, or looking at the, at the growth of volcanoes and predicting eruptions like what we're concerned about right. now with, with Kilauea. Now, 
Our department actually offers a four course sequence online where you can earn a certificate of achievement in weather forecasting. It's not a BS degree, but the college does have a couple online full degrees. Tell yeah. us a little bit about those. Yeah, well, there's, a, there's an undergraduate degree in energy sustainability and policy. That's a, that's a complete bachelor's degree. We have several master's degree offerings, including an um, earth science education degree for practicing teachers to advance their careers. We have a very successful program in geographic information systems. So we have a suite of offerings and we're always developing more. We're almost out of time, but can you think of one other sort of hidden gem that we haven't talked about that people should know about the College of Earth and Mineral Sciences? You know, the one, and maybe it's not that hidden, but the Ryan Family Student Center. This is where uh, students of the college, primarily undergraduates, gather. They go there to collaborate, to work in teams, to uh, mentor each other, to, to receive um, guidance and tutoring. It's a place where um, great things happen and it's fulfilled uh, then Dean of Earth and Mineral Science, uh, Eric Barron, and now President of Penn State's mission to make the College of Earth and Mineral Sciences the most student-centric college at Penn State, and that mission's been achieved. Indeed. Dr. Lee Kump, Dean of the College of Earth and Mineral Sciences, thanks for stopping by, Well, Lee. thanks for having me. Great to be back. And we will return in a moment with a recap of the short-range forecast.